Same as even Leo Messi, but now Pjanic has broken through here. This could lead to something. Usman Dembele, the comeback could be on. Dembele scores. Let's go. Literally one of our first chances in front of goal. Now it's Memphis. I need some support. I need some support. Pjanic providing that support. Pjanic turns. That's unbelievable from Miral and Pjanic. What a game he's had. So here we are back again with another episode of the Barcelona Career Mode series, episode number 7 on FIFA 21. We even got the Barca kit on for today's episode. Now last episode, a lot happened. I mean, we had that big game against Atletico where we were 2-0 down but managed to get ourselves a draw and with that, we're now top of La Liga but it's so close with Atleti and Sevilla and even Real Madrid for that matter. The title race is going to be heated this season. Off the pitch though we had an offer come in for Sergi Roberto from Manchester City which we did end up accepting. So I'm not sure if the transfer is going to go through or not but if it does we're going to have to start looking at options and in this episode we're going to kind of make a short list of players we might look to sign. And also we do have some tricky fixtures in La Liga as we look to get done with the month of November in today's episode. Sevilla and Bilbao both in the same episode, that's going to be a challenge. We got big fixtures in La Liga, transfer discussion to make and a lot more. So if you guys are enjoying the career mode content on the channel, make sure you drop a like on the video, that'd be amazing. If we can smash out 5,000 likes again, that'd be unbelievable. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and let's get this underway. Time for a press conference and if you guys want to see your questions being answered, drop them down in the comment section below. First one of the day, train Memphis Depay to be a striker as you clearly lose three ratings as he doesn't have striker in one of his positions. So I completely forgot about that. I thought if you're a centre forward and if you're played out in that striker position, you should be fine and you won't lose potential overalls. Whereas Memphis Depay actually is losing out on overalls. He could be getting a plus five boost. Instead, he's only getting a plus three boost for me. So, in today's episode, definitely going to train Memphis's position to a striker. Add that to another one of his positions and that could really help give him that extra boost, which could prove to be vital. So, appreciate the comment. We're going to be getting Memphis training very soon. Next up, and well, this is the transfer news I've been talking about. Jose Gaia could be Alba's replacement. He's been linked to Barca previously. If you want to get a new right back, maybe you can go ahead and sign Max Ahrens who was actually Barca's B plan if they didn't get Serginio Dest. Very true, Barcelona were actually interested in Max Adams, but Norwich were just not willing to sell him. Now, about Jose Gaia, honestly, he looks like the perfect replacement for, for Jordi Alba. I mean, Alba also came from Valencia. Gaia is currently playing at Valencia. It just feels like a match made in heaven. He's 83 rated as well. He's going to be expensive, but I talked about replacing Alba in the last episode. And if a big offer comes in for Jordi Alba, I'm probably going to accept it and maybe move towards Gaia. Let me know what your thoughts are on a potential Jose Gaia to Barcelona transfer. There were rumors linking him to the club, and I do want to keep the series realistic. About the right back though, we are definitely going to sign a right back in case the Sergi Roberto deal goes through. And I think these two are going to be my options. Max Ahrens and Emerson. Now, for some reason on this game, Emerson is actually a permanent player for Real Betis. He should actually be out on loan in a way, but that's not the case here. Max Ahrens or Emerson is what I'm trying to choose from, but it's such a difficult decision to make. We'll see though. We're going to scout them a bit and then make our decision in future episodes. Let me know, at least based on what you've seen so far, Max Ahrens or Emerson, who would you prefer to be one of Barcelona's right backs along with Serginio Dest. Next up, please use the new simulation feature because I've seen other YouTubers use it and it is really sick. So I do get that. I do really like how the new simulation system looks. It's super cool and allows you to get through games faster. But as you guys know, I do like playing most of my games in career mode. But I do understand we could like kind of speed up the pace of the series just a tad bit by simulating a game here and there. So I'm thinking guys and I want you guys to let me know in the comment section maybe we simulate one game every episode and that way we get through four games an episode instead of the regular three. It's just a thought. Let me know in the comment section if you guys want me to do that to you know speed up the pace of the series just a tad bit. Maybe some of the pointless games here and there that we can sim through of course the detailed match sim. We could maybe even jump in at some point and score like a penalty or free kick if we get one that'll be funny but 
yeah that's the plan let me know in the comment section what's your thoughts on me simulating maybe one game every episode i'd love to know your thoughts on this with that press conference done let's kick on it was a sensational episode from the bosnian international miralem pjanic as he completely dominated atletico inspired our comeback from being 2-0 down a goal and an assist in that game and that's why he picks up the player of the episode award. Okay guys, before I forget, I want to give Memphis Depay a development plan to of course change his position. Let's see how long that's going to take to make him like a striker. 68 weeks! 68 weeks to make Memphis Depay a striker. Are you kidding me, man? Yo, that, that's not cool at all. We're going to still put him on that development plan because I do want him to get that boost ultimately, but... Wow, 68 weeks, that is a lot of time. We'll see how this goes and how long it's going to actually take on the pitch. Also on a side note, I kind of want to transfer list Martin Braithwaite. I'm just not keen on keeping him. I don't think he's good enough to be a Barcelona player. We've already got Memphis and Griezmann in that position. Messi can play there as well. So I am going to transfer list Martin Braithwaite. Yep, if offers come in for him, he can leave. We'll do more of a discussion on a potential right-back signing soon once the Roberto deal goes through. Until then, we got ourselves a game against Bilbao, who are actually 7th in La Liga. So, this is going to be a tricky outing. we got to keep winning to keep pace with Atletico and stay one step ahead of them. So, let's go out there at the camp now and get the result. This is how we've got our team set up for this one against Atletic Bilbao. Antoine Griezmann leading the line. Trincao and Ansu Fati on either side, Messi playing in Gamma. Stamina is a bit low, so I'm definitely going to sub him off at some point. De Jong and Pjanic in midfield. Our defense is as is. You know what? If Roberto is on his way out, I kind of want to start playing Sergio Des more often. But yeah, his stamina is actually pretty low. So for this game, we'll stick with Sergio Roberto. Barcelona, Bilbao, let's get it. So far this season in La Liga, we've dropped points against Atletico, Real Sociedad, I think Villarreal as well. So... Yeah, these kind of teams really cause us problems with their intensity and all. So I'm hoping this time around that we can get ourselves a win against one of the, you know, top sides in La Liga. How has our defense just been opened up like that? It's Iker Munyain on the attack. We got a cover. I've completely messed up Raul Garcia with a big chance. And well, there you have it. Atletic Bilbao take the early lead. Similar to what happened against Atletico Madrid in that last episode. Oh, we got to fix up conceding early goals against good sides, man. It's, it's, it puts us really on the back seat here. Fair enough, though. This was a really good goal. PK caught napping. Raul Garcia, a player that's annoyed Barcelona for years. And, well, he's just made it 1-0. This is going to be a difficult challenge. But I desperately want to win this game. We need a bit of Ansu Fati action in this one. Go on, Ansu. He's got the pace. Still Ansu. Could do something here from a difficult... I'm sorry. Did he just pass that right to Unai Simon? A cutback would have been better. I messed up there. Athletic Bilbao are having one hell of a game. Raul Garcia yet again, but he messes up the pass there. Long lead as well, but my god, Athletic Bilbao actually look like they've got a plan here. And of course, the camp now. They're putting us under a lot of pressure. But of course, now we've got an attack here that we could do something with. Ansu Fati looking for the cross for Leo Messi. Messi with the header. How's he missed that? I remember scoring a similar goal against Real Madrid earlier on in the season. Leo Messi's header goes just right. That's why... Messi in the air isn't the best tactic, so there you go. Still 1-0 Bilbao. A free kick from 32 yards. This is just too much. There's nothing we can do from like 32 yards, but I'm just going to go for it with Leo Messi. Ah, too much power, not much accuracy. That was not the best of free kicks from me. I hate this. I hate this. Athletic Bilbao once again in acres of space. I messed up there with PK at all. Ike Munyain with a chance here, cut back and uh, Ibai Gomez scores right before the halftime whistle as well. We got caught napping again at the back. Huh, this reminds me of that Atletico Madrid game so much where we were 2-0 down I think before halftime. And now we are in a similar situation. It's going to be a difficult, difficult second half for us but we've been outplayed here. We've ab absolutely been outplayed. It's been terrible. We might be losing our first game this season. Half time and things need to change in the second half because we're clearly not in it. Maybe I bring on Usman Dembele. I think that's got to be the play. In fact, let's do it right now. The first thing I'm doing for the second half is Usman Dembele. Uh, but Messi's stamina is so low right now. I'm still going to keep him on because he's Leo Messi. We'll bring on Usman Dembele for now. And I think I'm going to keep it that, that way. Okay, Dembele comes on for Trincao. Let's see what we can do in the second half. Backs it against the wall yet again. Problems here for us as it's Raul Garcia. PK does well. De Jong wins that. And now I'm going to spread it wide for Usman Dembele. You guys have noticed that Usman Dembele, when he plays on this right side, he's virtually unstoppable. So let's hope for a similar top-class performance here. But Griezmann and Dembele, um, 
I don't know what, what were they doing there, but Griezmann has a chance here to score it. It's off the post. Oh, come on. We needed that to go in, guys. We absolutely needed that to go in, but at least Dembele is having a big impact. And now Messi, though, with a chance. What can he do from here? Keeping possession of the ball, finding Griezmann. Back to Leo Messi now. It's good football. Messi with the fake shot. Still Messi. Ah, that's good defending from Bilbao. We just can't seem to break them down. We're putting them under so much pressure, but uh, they're defending so well. It's frustrating at this point. Usman Dembele though with a chance. Still Dembele. There's the five-star skill moves. Still Dembele tries to get the shot off, gets a bit lucky, fires the ball inside, but cleared away by Bilbao. We're putting them under so much pressure, but they're defending so well. Corner for us. I'm going to take this one with Miralem Pjanic. We need a goal from maybe a set piece and Frankie de Jong comes up clutch. We need something out of nothing and that's exactly what's happened here. The Bilbao defense completely messed this one up. Miralem Pjanic picking up yet another assist. It's our two midfielders that combine as Barcelona get a goal back and a bit of hope in this one. Take a look at that again. Miralem Pjanic with a fantastic delivery. What on earth was the Bilbao defense doing there? I have no idea but I'll take that. We're back in it, guys. Dembele is going to use his space to burn the defender. He's had such a big impact after coming on. Looking for the cross for Leo Messi. Unai Simon gets it away. I don't know why I'm trying to even cross it for Leo. But we might have a chance here. Leo Messi, fake shot. Uh, oh, he still worked well. Messi, cut back inside. Yerai with the interception. Another corner. I'd love another goal from a set piece. Miralem Pjanic puts this one in. The header from Longley. So close to going in. Imagine a couple of goals from set pieces here. You'd never see that on FIFA 20, but on FIFA 21, corners are OP. It's now Leo Messi. Messi looks for Griezmann. What a run that is from Griezmann. Back to Leo Messi. It's brilliantly worked from Barcelona. A deserved equaliser from us. Because in this second half, we've completely gone for it. As Barcelona make it to all the link-up play there between Messi and Griezmann was simply sensational. I knew Griezmann was on his weaker right foot, so I wasn't confident to take the shot. The simple cut back to Leo Messi was just the smart thing to do. We did that, and courtesy of that, we now get the equaliser. This game was literally the same thing as what happened against Atletico. 2-0 down at halftime, and we've made the comeback to 2-all. Is there time, though, to push for a winner? I'm not sure. We'll see. Messi, scooping this one for Antoine Griezmann. Can he pull it off? No, why the header? I wanted him to go for the volley there, but oh, with that, I think it should be full-time. Yup, it is. A draw against Atletic Bilbao at home. I told you guys this was never going to be an easy fixture, but although I am disappointed that we dropped points, the character we showed in the second half to make the comeback is definitely something to be proud of. But yeah, against teams like Atletic Bilbao, Atleti, Villarreal, we've dropped points and that needs to stop. I've never been this confused. Thanks for showing faith in me, boss. Even though I'm not one of the big stars of the club, I'm going to tell him I'm proud of you, but... If I'm not wrong, I think I've played Neto like maybe once in this series. Okay, twice, thrice, but two of them were in the preseason. What's he happy about? Um, okay, if you're happy then well, fair enough. Okay, so Atletico Madrid have dropped points as well. They drew their game and that means both us and Atleti are on 28 points. Real Madrid have started to close the gap down a bit. They're just a couple of points behind us. I told you man, La Liga's title race this season is going to be epic. The deal for Sergio Roberto to Manchester City has gone through. Fair enough, I guess. I know he's been a great servant to the club, a very versatile player, scored one of the most exciting goals in Barca's history against PSG, but it's time to move on to better players and that's why Roberto has been sold. We'll be getting about 33.5 million from this deal. Obviously, that means the hunt for a right back is on. At this very moment, Max Ahrens, and Emerson are the players I'm looking for. With training, I'm sure we could get them to a high rating really quickly. Emerson is a player I've used before in one of my Barca careers. And that's why I feel like Max Ahrens has to be the one. I don't know, I've just got a feeling that he'll be so epic at Barcelona. We normally don't see English players playing for the club. So, it'd be a pretty unique transfer to pull off. Let me know in the comments section who should we sign for that right back position. Should it be between the two of them or maybe someone better? It's up to you guys in the comments. But... We're going to scout them for now, get to know them more, and of course in January, that's when we'll pull the trigger. Looks like our youth scout is back with an update on more Spanish players. Are we going to see anyone good? Daniel Ponce, a goalkeeper, 6-5. Looks actually pretty good, 74-94 potential, we'll sign him up, but nobody else looks remotely interesting. I guess Youth Academy, they've kind of nerfed it this year on FIFA 21. We're not getting like outrageous players like we had got before on my previous Barcelona career modes. I remember Juan Insua as one of my super talents in the Barca series. 
There were more, there were definitely more, I just can't remember off the top of my head. Hopefully in this series we'll get like a super talent from the academy soon. I mean we do have a few decent players in the academy, one thing I don't like is the fact that this Ponce guy is already 18 and is just 53 rated, he's gonna take a lot of time to grow. I do like this Kearney dude because he's got a good potential and he's only 15 so yeah but the academy is looking really lackluster at the moment. Okay so we finally got scout reports on Max Ahrens as well as Emerson. Max Ahrens' rating is actually pretty low. That's kind of a bummer but with training I'm sure we can get him up to speed very soon. And Serginio Des, do we trust him with being Barcelona's starter already? Ooh, that's a tough decision to make. Emerson, 78 rated. He seems like also a very good choice, but I'm, I'm leaning towards Max Ahrens even though his overall isn't that high. It's gonna be a really tough call for us to make. Another option we've got is going for someone high rated like maybe Cancelo. Just going for that sheer quality. Cancelo would also be a fantastic transfer. He's also been linked to Barcelona with of course like a swap deal between Semedo and Cancelo, but that didn't come through. But we, we could go for this as well instead of going for youth, maybe going for like an established player. It's a big decision. The right back is an important position for the club and you guys need to get involved and let me know what we should do. For now though, it's another big fixture in La Liga for us as we take on Sevilla who are just four points behind us. We lose here and they'll be just a point off us and we'll give Atleti and Real Madrid a chance to go above us. So it's a big game at the Ramon Sanchez Pichuan. Sevilla away is not going to be an easy fixture whatsoever. So... Let's get into it. I've made a few interesting decisions for this one. Ansu Fati still starts on the left, although Dembele has kind of been outperforming him. I still want to trust Fati down that left side. Jules Konde playing against this former team. Serginio Des starts a big game like this. It's a big test for him because he is probably one of the lowest rated starters that we've got in the team at the moment. So let's hope we can put in a good performance. It's Barca Sevilla. They've got some good players. They've made the signing of Dimitri Payet. They've got Ocampos, Rakitic back at Barcelona as well. This is going to be fun. If you guys follow me on Twitter, y'all know I'm not the biggest of Rakitic fans. <laughs> That's pretty obvious. He had a great first season at Barca. was unbelievable. But since then, it was a downgrade after downgrade. And then eventually, he was just awful. So if he scores in this game, I'll be pretty mad. So just want to prevent that from happening. Frankie de Jong now looks for Memphis Depay. Sees Felipe Coutinho, good touch, goes for goal, oh Felipe Coutinho on his weaker left foot has just done that. I'm glad we've taken the lead because in these kind of games normally we drop points, we concede an early goal but this time we're flipping up the scene as we've now scored with Felipe Coutinho, a lovely finish from the Brazilian. Correct me if I'm wrong, that was Frankie De Jong with the assist there. No, eventually it was Memphis Depay with the assist, De Jong was involved in the build up play but that is a world class finish from Phil. When he plays in cam and when he can pull off stuff like that, he is just unbeatable. Coutinho makes it 1-0 against Sevilla. Lopetegui looks furious. Barcelona 1-0 up. Frankie de Jong looking for Memphis. That's brilliantly done there from the Dutch international Memphis. Simple cut back. Felipe Coutinho adds another one to his tally. Barcelona in cruise control at the Ramon sanchez Pijuan. Coutinho with a brace. Memphis does brilliantly there. Honestly, watching Messi do that was so creepy. Like... <laughs> That was hilarious, that stupid dance. But anyways, Memphis deserves a lot of the credit here for the goal. Coutinho just put it, put that tap in home. Barcelona and cruise control, come on. De Jong looks for Rakitic, he's opened up space, looks for De Jong again. I'm going for the sliding challenge, that was inch perfect from Clément Longley. We would have conceded if not for that sliding challenge. Fair enough, Longley. I think I need to be using sliding challenges more often because they seem to be pretty useful, you know, as like a last ditch attempt on this game. Because we didn't concede the penalty there. It was a completely fair challenge. Rakitic inside for De Jong. De Jong looking to turn me there. Finds Ivan Rakitic. Serginho Des saves me. Rakitic again shoots. Oh, I just want to cry. We've just allowed Ivan Rakitic to score against us. Of all the players, Rakitic scores against us. And he celebrates as well. That's the last thing I wanted. Good thing for us, we're still 2-1 up. But ah, that is such a silly goal to concede. What on earth was Serginho Des doing? Half time against Sevilla and everything seems to be going according to plan. Apart from that Rakitic goal. That's now made the second half a lot more interesting. Let's see what we can do in the second half. We need to win here. Especially after dropping points in our last fixture. Ivan Rakitic on the attack here. Oh, look at the dribbling from Rakitic. Where was that when he was at Barcelona last season? Okay, Fernando now on the ball. Sevilla looking really good now. It's Rakitic again. Good challenge from Clément Longley, who's been impeccable in this game, apart from maybe that one moment. But yeah, he's been tremendous. 
Memphis scooping this one for Leo Messi has to score. Oh my god, the finish was lacking. How close was that to being a fantastic Leo Messi goal on the volley as well? That's so, so close. Ah, De Jong on the ball here. Can't let him shoot. The scoreline is still. Oh my god. Rakitic with a brace against us of all players. Ah, this is this is painful. This is honestly painful. We've thrown away a 2-0 advantage. And Rakitic is the one to do that. 10 minutes to go as well. This is just embarrassing from us. Barcelona 2, Sevilla 2. 10 minutes now to salvage the three points, man. Oh, this is so frustrating. Full time and this was borderline embarrassing. Like Rakitic scoring a brace and celebrating both times. Like honestly, wow. We've dropped points back to back in La Liga, this time against Sevilla. So, so frustrating. We really should have won this game. We were the better team by a mile. Sevilla had a great second half to be fair, but yeah, this is so annoying. A great show from Coutinho, but only a draw. I think he was like the only good player in the attack for us. Even Messi was average. So was Depay, so was Ansu Fati. So fair enough, Coutinho, you had a good game. Atletico Madrid continue to drop points as well. And now Real Madrid have overtaken them and they've got the same amount of points as us. So it's a title race once again, that's gonna look like a Barcelona versus Real Madrid scene. Okay. Look at the amount of goals we've scored this season, 39, that's way more than any other team. Fair enough though, but yeah, we gotta stop dropping this many points. We've drawn 5 games, more than pretty much any other team than in the top 8 apart from Eibar. That's mad. For now though, up next, we've got a Champions League game against Dinamo Kiev, a team that I reckon we should be able to beat no matter what, so we're gonna simulate this one. You guys have been wanting to see the visual sim feature in action, so we're using our second team and doing the visual sim against Dinamo Kiev. I'm expecting a win here, regardless of the fact that it's our second team playing. So let's see what happens here. Oh my God, Dinamo Kiev, I'm actually scored. Wow, we're 1-0 down to Dinamo Kiev. Are you kidding me? Could be something for Memphis. Memphis shoots and scores and we get the equalizer. Thank God for that. Puig looking for Alenia. Now Memphis has to be a goal. It is a goal. Memphis Depay with a brace and we've made it 2-1 back in the lead. For the second half of this game, I'm gonna bring on Pedri and play Ricky Puig in central midfield. I think it's time we give Pedri some game time. I've kind of been ignoring him in this series. So there you go. That's the only sub I'm making. Pedri on the ball. Imagine he comes on and scores immediately. Looks for number five. Busquets, Memphis Depay gets himself a hat-trick. Sergio Busquets with the assist. And I think that's that for this one. Can't see Dinamo Kiev mounting a comeback. So we're just gonna try and simulate the entire game and get that done. How do we do that though? Oh, that's how we do it. So I'm just going to do jump to result. 3-1 is how it finishes. Dembele comes on for Trinka at the very end, but we get the job done. Barcelona 3, Dinamo Kiev 1. So it's all going to come down to the final Champions League group stage game to decide who finishes first in the group. Barcelona up against Juve, Messi versus Ronaldo. All we got to do is get a draw or a win, of course, and we finish first. But if Juve beat us, they go top of the group. So that game is going to be massive and it'll be in the next episode. We're back again with another game in La Liga as we take on Levante. Now, in this episode, we've drawn both our games in the league. So, I desperately want to win against Levante and preferably win big. And that's why Messi starts in camp. De Jong, who's, by the way, 88 rated already. Didn't even notice that. I'm starting Dembele on the right, Ansu on the left. Let's get into it. Oh, wow. Levante have opened space up here. I'm going for the sliding challenge. That could have easily been a penalty. Big save from Longley with the block that could have easily been one nil Levante the last thing I need now is conceding an early goal to them so we survived that Messi looking for the long ball for Usman Dembele it's a fantastic cross here for Dembele difficult angle but Usman Dembele makes it look easy that's how two-footed he is he made that look so so easy Usman Dembele with the breakthrough as Barcelona make it one nil against Levante what a finish and also what an assist from Leo Messi as well but look at that for the finish from Dembele oh my god was that ruthless. We should probably be 1-0 down. Instead, on the counter, we've made it 1-0 against Levante. Yes, Messi does so well there with the drag back. Still Messi. Still Messi here. Could go all the way. Messi shoots. Big block from the Levante defender. Want to see Messi on the score sheet here because it feels like it's been a while. Messi. What a ball for Ansu Fati. The question is, can he control it? He absolutely can. Ansu brings it inside with the Ronaldo chop. Can he score? Big save from the Levante keeper. That cross field ball from Leo Messi was sensational and that's why we need to see him more playing in that cam role. Griezmann looking for Leo Messi. Messi now sees Pjanic. It's simple football from Barcelona. Usman Dembele has to score. It's a simple finish. Dembele is having the game of his life as Barcelona make it 2-0. Miralem Pjanic has been 
absolutely ridiculous in this episode. Another assist there for the Bosnian as Barca make it 2-0 against Levante. Oh my god, what a position to have a free kick from. I mean, this is literally messy territory. If we can get this one up and under, that'll be unbelievable. Messi with a free kick. How has the keeper saved that? Wow, that was my chance to score with Messi from a free kick. Frustrating that we couldn't put that one in. Although, something could happen here. Messi on the volley. Imagine the scenes. Ah, the keeper saved that again. Once again, Messi's on the ball. Flicks it up. Keeps control of it. Pjanic looking for Messi. This has to be the goal. Messi with the header. Finally, he gets the goal. He absolutely deserves a simple header to beat the keeper there. It was just well placed. No power whatsoever. And he gets on the score sheet. Mirilem Pjanic again with the assist. Let's have a look. It was. It was Pjanic with the assist. What a scoop ball for Messi. And that was as easy as it gets. Pjanic has been sensational in this episode. Barcelona have made it 3-0 against Levante. Looking to maybe scoop this one again for Leo Messi. Can this be a goal? Messi off the post. Are you kidding me? Ansu though with a chance. Shoots. Blocked again. Messi's been so unlucky in this game. I know he scored already, but he could have scored way more. Pjanic has been unbelievable in this one. And there you have it. A clean sheet and a convincing win against Levante. That's actually our first win on the pitch in this episode. After dropping four points in like two games. So I'm glad we've got the job done here. A great performance from Tembele and Pjanic. It's a good win for us in La Liga. La Liga runs on head-to-head -head record. And that's why we are above Real Madrid in the league right now. Because our head-to-head -head record against them is much better. Because the fact that we beat them earlier on in this season. Atletico though are pretty close with just one point separating us and them. Luis Suarez is absolutely banging it in for Atletico and La Liga. Messi though, third top scorer in the league with 10, not bad at all. Do we have any other Barca players in here? Griezmann with 7, Depay with 6. Assist wise, Messi top assisted as well with 5. Pjanic and Benzema with 5 as well. That's interesting to see. Now next episode is about to be epic because we've got Juve in the Champions League group stages. Messi versus Ronaldo, the game that decides who finishes first in the group. We've got some La Liga games. Transfer window approaching, we're already in December and we've just spoken about potentially making more signings, you know, with Sergio Roberto leaving the club. So, yeah, that's going to happen soon. We've got a lot of money to spend. It's going to be a ton of fun. So, yeah, I'm excited. Before we wrap up the episode, time for a quick player of the episode award voting session. For me, it's between Dembele and Pjanic. Dembele with those two amazing goals against, of course, Levante and Pjanic with the assist all round was just simply sensational it's between the two of them let me know in the comment section who you guys think deserves to win the player of the episode award but with that guys time to wrap up yet another episode of the barcelona career mode series on fifa 21 hopefully you guys are enjoying the content and if you guys are smash a like on the video subscribe if you're new around here and well i'll catch you all next time